Hello there. Our topic this afternoon is the uh, divided kingdom. Um, and this is where things get quite uh, complicated. Up until now, we've had Saul and David and Solomon <clears throat> as the three kings. Solomon descended from David. David and Saul not related at all. And then we come to the division. Um, it's a very sad thing. Um, and into this period come all the major and minor prophets. Well, not all. Well, not quite all of them, actually. But best part of them. Um, so, something to say in outline, really, is that during this period, there were major, there, were, there was the rise of three uh, very uh, large, very powerful empires. And uh, there was also, in the background, and sometimes in the foreground, another empire, which was the Egyptian Empire. The Egyptians down in the south, and then as you look at a map of the Holy Land, which I haven't got in front of me, but if you think, if you look at a map of the Holy Land, you'll see, um, well, I, I can draw it in front of you, but if you look at a map, you can see that uh, there is the Mediterranean Sea um, to the west, and the Arabian Desert to the east, and then south is the Egyptian kingdom and then immediately north is the Syrian kingdom with the capital of Damascus and that that is very powerful for long periods of time and then it's overtaken by the Assyrian kingdom. Now some Bibles call the Syrian kingdom the Chaldeans. Um, they changed the name that they use but I'll use the traditional names that were always used in, in the King James Bible and others. So north with the capital, Damascus, was Syria. And that was very powerful, very powerful during the early days of the divided kingdom. And then to its east, the Assyrian kingdom uh, grew and grew and grew. Uh, and then it overtook the Syrians completely. And then after them arose the Babylonian kingdom uh, with its capital of Babylon. And that spread westward and overtook the remains of the Assyrian kingdom and the territory that used to be the Syrians. And part of the, part of the pressure on the land that God had given to his people was that there were always people wanting to control it because it was a corridor. It was a travelling corridor with a desert one side and a, a, a sea the other side um, and quite a lot of mountains in between and there was basically one road or two roads, one by the, one by the coast and one further inland through the land of, of Canaan or land that Israel took over um, and people wanted to control it uh, and the Egyptians sometimes controlled it, the Syrians sometimes controlled it, and often the battleground for control was the territory that God had given to his people. And there was always toing and froing of uh, argument between the great powers with this small land in the middle, um, sometimes paying tribute to keep peace and sometimes standing against those who were marching over their land um, to try and stop them uh, making use of the land. So they were right in the middle of this, all this toing and froing that went on. So, <coughs> so thinking back to, the, back to the biblical story, we are now looking at uh, one, uh, so Solomon's kingdom is in uh, 1 Kings uh, 2 to 11. Uh, that's right. And then the divided kingdom is at the end of of that, uh, of the, the kings, the two kings. Now, the thing about this is that Chronicles, one and two Chronicles, also tells the story 
of the time of the divided kingdom. Um, so it's a parallel pair of books, um, one and two kings, one and two chronicles. They parallel each other. Now you might say, well, why have we got uh, two accounts of the same thing? And the reason is basically that the one and two kings are just a telling of the story. And then one and two chronicles are a telling of the story from a spiritual point of view, from a priestly point of view, from a God's point of view. And there are some insights and extra bits put into the story in 1 and 2 Chronicles that don't appear in 1 and 2 Kings. And, um, but you must never think that they follow on from each other. They actually, they, they actually are parallel. They go along the same journey, talking about the same kings. So that's, that's those things. And into this period, we have to put the prophets... Uh, because what happened was the kingdom split into the north and the south. This came about because Solomon had been very, very rich, very wealthy. He was a very peaceful king. He never went to war. Um, uh, and he established an enormous amount of wealth. And he built lots of things. He built lots of cities. He built the temple. He built an enormous palace for himself um, in Jerusalem. And he used forced labour. Um, the people, his people spent one month working for him and three months working on their own land. And they felt by the end of his reign very oppressed by uh, the service they had to give to him. Um, and uh, he was wise in lots of ways, but by the end of his reign, he wasn't that wise in the way that he governed his own people. So we get to the end of his reign and there's a guy called Jeroboam who is uh, originally an overseer um, in, for one of these building pro projects and he becomes aware of the discontent within the people as a result of the way that Solomon uh, forced them to labour. So when Solomon dies and his son Rehoboam, now this is unfortunate that Two names are very similar. So Rehoboam is the son of Solomon, the son of David. He's the descendant of David, Rehoboam. And Jeroboam is the leader of the rebellion against Rehoboam. His name is Jeroboam. Um, so Rehoboam comes to the throne and Jeroboam, on behalf of the people, says says to him, well, they say to him, uh, ease the burden that your father has given to us and we will serve you. And he consults the wise men who had been advisors to his father and they say, that's a good idea. Um, they'll love you if if you're kind to them. And then he talks to his friends, his his uh, his, his contemporaries, and mind you, he's about 40 years of age when he comes. He's not young. He's not a teenager. But he consults the young, younger people. And they say, think how wealthy your father was. Uh, if you oppress them more, you'll have more. You know, tell them, no, my, my father was kind to you. I'm going to be harder to you. I'm going to scourge you with scorpions. And the result of this is that Jeroboam leads a rebellion and 10 of the tribes go with him. That is the 10 tribes that all are living to the north. And they set up a new kingdom in the north, uh, which is called Israel. And in the south, Rehoboam has two tribes left, the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. So 10 tribes are ruled in the north by Jeroboam and two tribes are ruled in the south by Rehoboam. And in the south, and they're called Judah, the south is called Judah. And this is where it gets confusing because the, the name Judah has been in the patriarchs and the name Israel has been in the patriarchs. But when we're talking about the kingdom period, we have to know which area the king is ruling. 
and broadly speaking, the kings in the north that followed Jeroboam, none of them were descended from David. Not a single one of them was descended from David. And it was a very unstable kingdom because it didn't have a proper hierarchy, a proper uh, dynasty or anything like that. And there was coup after coup after coup in the northern kingdom. And in the southern kingdom, the kingdom of Judah, Benjamin and Judah, the two tribes, making that up with the capital, Jerusalem. Every single person, apart from one, who ruled on the throne of the southern kingdom of Judah was a descendant of David. So when we're looking at um, kings, the books of kings and books of chronicles, they will say, Things like, in the third year of Jehoram, king of Judah, Jehu, king of Israel, began to reign. And you have to see that they're, they're taking the, they're saying, this king is on the throne in the south, this king is in the throne on the north. And when this king dies and his successor takes over, that's during the reign, the, the, however many years of the reign of the person in the other kingdom and they and it can get very confusing if you don't concentrate on those passages because they are swapping backwards and forwards between the two kingdoms in their account of what happens and what what is done and what happens and of course the northern kingdom is nearer to Syria that great power we were talking about than the southern kingdom is. So during that early part of the divided kingdom, the oppression comes from the north, from Syria, upon the northern kingdom of Israel. Now, there are some very interesting people who are uh, rulers in the northern kingdom. Uh, name, uh, perhaps the most important one really is Ahab, who is uh, one, two, three, four, five, is the sixth king of the northern kingdom a seventh king, the son of Omri, married to Jezebel. And it was while he was ruling that Elijah comes to the fore. Elijah um, starts to come in the, the reign of Ahab. Um, uh, and we have all the business about the um, Mount Carmel and all, and the... And the and the prophets of Baal that had all been introduced by Jezebel, who was not a Jew. She was a descendant of the king who was, um, oh gosh, I can't think of the name of the place, on the coast, the northern coast. Oh dear, I think my mind's gone. <laughs> Let me just find it. Jezebel, she was the daughter of the king who reigned. Oh, I need a map. I'm looking for my map. I'm glad you're at home with me and you're enjoying this. Uh, she was, she was, uh, her, her, she, she came from Tyre and Sidon, which was an area on the coast of northern. Uh, uh, just on the coast, Israel was more in, they didn't, rule it but Tyre it was another little kingdom and Jezebel was the daughter of the king that lived there and he was a very cruel person and she uh, was like her father um, and then we have Elisha um, uh, appointed by Elijah um, this is in two one and two kings um, dealing with the northern kingdom more than the southern kingdom and if we go to Chronicles we get the wonderful account of Jehoshaphat, who is the king of the southern kingdom around about the same time, who wins a great battle through praise. I'm going to stop there because I'm going to do an interlude here um, of a very important uh, occurrence in the history of the Old Testament that is very seldom talked about because it's just too complicated. Bye-bye for now.